Your spinal cord is an essential structure for muscle movement and the control of many internal organs, acting as a channel for messages between the brain and body. But what happens when it gets damaged? A traumatic spinal cord injury, or SCI, occurs when the spinal cord becomes damaged due to an external force, resulting in impaired or lost function of muscles and organs. The location of the injury on the spinal cord will determine what parts of the body will be impacted. This is because an individual will lose functioning or control of muscles and organs controlled by the spinal cord at the level of their injury and below. The first seven vertebrae of the spinal cord, located in the neck, are the cervical vertebrae. A cervical SCI results in more function being lost as these vertebrae are higher up on the spine and therefore more of the spinal cord will be unable to send and receive signals. Injuries to the C1 to C4 vertebrae are the most severe as they can impair function to the arms, trunk, and legs. Individuals with cervical SCIs will typically be tetraplegic, which means that all four limbs are paralyzed. They can no longer function. Individuals with cervical SCIs may require assistance with everyday activities or 24-hour care. The thoracic vertebrae refer to the next 12 vertebrae in the upper and middle area of the back. Thoracic SCIs vary greatly depending on the specific location of the injury. An injury in the T1 to T5 region will limit functioning of the legs, lower back, and abdomen. Injuries in the T6 to T12 region will reduce bowel and bladder control and lower limb functioning. Individuals with thoracic SCIs will typically be paraplegic, meaning that only their legs are paralyzed. The lumbar vertebrae are the next five vertebrae located in the lower back. Injury to this area may result in diminished hip and leg function. Voluntary control of the bowel and bladder are also diminished or lost. The last five vertebrae are the sacral vertebrae, which run through the pelvis. Injury to this part of the spinal cord may impact hip and leg function, but individuals will often be able to walk. However, individuals may lose bowel or bladder control. Within each of these types of SCI, there are different classes of injuries. Incomplete injuries refer to when some motor or sensory function remains below the injury site because signals between the brain and certain areas of the body can still be sent. Complete injuries are when no function remains below the injury site. The most common cause of SCIs are motor vehicle collisions, accounting for 38% of new SCIs each year in the United States. Falls are the leading cause in American individuals above the age of 65, making up 30% of new SCI cases. Other common causes include violent interactions, sports-related accidents, and medical or surgical causes. About 50% of new injuries occur in individuals aged 16 to 30, with men making up 80% of these injuries. Spinal cord injuries will cause a broad range of physical effects. The inability to move and control affected muscles is one of the most well-known effects of a spinal injury. Unfortunately, it is not possible to reverse the damage done by an injury in the spinal cord. However, patients with an SCI can attend physical rehabilitation. Through physical therapy, patients can regain and strengthen muscle function and improve motor balance. Individuals with an SCI may experience pain from overuse of unaffected muscles. This is called musculoskeletal pain. For example, pain may occur in the arms due to wheelchair use. Additionally, patients with an SCI may suffer pain caused by nerve damage in the spinal cord. This is called neuropathic pain, which is when abnormal communication between damaged nerves and the brain results in pain. It is even possible that a patient feels pain in an area that otherwise has no sensation. Pain is a complicated issue and patients may have to try different treatments before they find one that works. Physical therapy, massages, or acupuncture, as well as painkillers may be used to treat musculoskeletal pain. Neuropathic pain may be treated using anti-seizure medications or antidepressants. Autonomic dysreflexia is a condition in which a patient's blood pressure suddenly gets very high. It is most common in individuals who have an injury at T6 or higher. AD happens when a painful or uncomfortable sensation occurs in an area in which a person no longer can feel different sensations or control muscles. For example, this could be a prick to the legs of an individual who is paralyzed in their legs. The body wants to react to the stimulus and sends a fight or flight response. In a person with normal spinal cord functioning, 
this signal will be counteracted by the brain when it realizes that it doesn't need to react severely, because the stimulus will likely not harm them. However, this counteraction does not happen in individuals with spinal cord injuries, and the brain reacts to the stimulus as if it's incredibly dangerous. This causes a spike in blood pressure, which can be life-threatening. In order to manage AD, a patient can try to remove whatever caused the AD. If this doesn't help, individuals can take medication to lower their blood pressure. Spinal injuries will often impair a person's ability to control their bowel and bladder because information from the brain that tells the bowel and bladder when to hold onto or release their contents can no longer be sent properly. To manage limited bladder functioning, a catheter may be used. Catheterization is when a tube is inserted into the bladder to drain the bladder and ensure it doesn't get too full. To manage a lack of bowel control, patients may collaborate with a health professional to create a bowel program where a patient works on training their body to have regular bowel movements by regulating timing, diet, fluids, and medication. Lastly, sexual functioning may be disrupted in individuals with an SCI. For example, men may have changes in erectile functioning, and women may experience changes in lubrication. Speaking with a urologist and open communication with sexual partners are important steps in having fulfilling intimate relationships. Individuals with an SCI have to cope with their roles in society changing drastically. Relationships with family and friends may begin to shift. A spouse may become a caretaker or it might become more difficult for an injured individual to parent their children. Individuals in society may view those with an SCI as a patient rather than a contributing member of society. Individuals with an SCI may lose part of their independence as their ability to carry out daily activities and functions become contingent on the help of others. Ultimately, these shifts can cause depression and anxiety in injured individuals. Individuals with an SCI may also turn to substance use to cope with the changes that they undergo. Research has found that, on average, individuals with an SCI experience higher levels of distress and lower levels of life satisfaction when compared to the general population. However, there is great individual variability in susceptibility to this distress. Additionally, research indicates that while relationships with friends, families, and communities are worse in the first few years after an injury, most individuals, by the fourth year after an injury, have a balanced emotional state and a rewarding social life. During the time after an SCI, it is extremely important for individuals to get the psychological and social support they need. There are a number of available therapy options to reduce distress and improve functioning. For example, studies exploring cognitive behavioral therapy have shown promising results in improving social and emotional well-being in individuals with an SCI. Medical interventions such as antidepressants are also viable options for injured individuals. Social supports, like support groups, are common in the SCI community and may provide injured individuals with peer support, belonging, and validation. So far, we have seen how individuals with an SCI have to deal with incredible changes in multiple aspects of their lives. Often, an SCI and the changes that follow may lead an individual to identify or be identified as disabled. The UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities defines people with disabilities as those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. This definition hints at the two main models of disability, the medical model and the social model. The medical model of disability explains that individuals with disabilities are disabled because of their physical condition which is intrinsic to them. For example, someone who is paralyzed is disabled because they are unable to move or use their legs. The different treatments that were previously mentioned, such as physical therapy or bowel programs, fall under the medical model because these treatments focus on curing an individual to relieve the negative effects of having a disability. However, there is another important model of disability, the social model. This model explains that disability is a product of societal barriers, negative attitudes, and exclusion. 
For example, a paralyzed individual may be considered disabled because staircases contribute to their inability to access certain places and spaces. Under this model, there needs to be more than just physical treatments to improve the well-being of individuals with disabilities. For example, an individual who has an SCI may find that they're able to participate more fully and enjoyably in a workplace that allows extra time off to attend medical appointments, has elevators or wheelchair accessible ramps, and offers special software that enables them to work on a computer despite limited hand functioning. Ultimately, traumatic spinal cord injuries are often life-changing injuries that cause large shifts in a person's life, both in regards to their physical condition, as well as their experiences in society. This video covered a lot of the baseline information about spinal injuries. That being said, there are many other effects that can result from spinal cord injuries, as well as other treatments that physicians may recommend for spinal injuries. Make sure to talk to your healthcare team for specific information about your own health. If you are curious to learn more, there are a multitude of other resources we will link in the description.